Yeah, right up to dirt level. Just a little bit more. Yeah, that'll be that probably it, I think. I don't know, what do you think? Just a little more probably. Just a little bit and I'm gonna run more out the wheel bar.
Okay, here's the method of laying radials. You start with uh, the extension. You have 65 foot measure directly back to the radial plate in line with the vertical in the back. You come out 65 feet. You stick your screwdriver in the, in the uh, ground and then over six foot nine and a half inches is the next place for the next radial and that's how you go around the circle laying radials here okay so here's how we put down a radial there's the roll of radial wire here's the wire here um, i'm holding you walk it out along the length of the guide it's 65 feet you get to the end of the guide. You start a nail right here in front of the guide. You wrap the radial wire around the nail. I'm gonna see if it sets you down here. You see if you can see it. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. You wrap it around couple twists around the wire itself and you pound it into the ground right in front of the guide as you can see it's in the ground and it's holding and you just that's it that's the radial and you go back now to the back where it's attached to the radial plate And you grab your cutters and you pull your radial so that it's right along the guide by pulling on it. You now trim your radial a little long, about four inches. You stick it through the hole next to where the guide is Loop it around, once over, and the radial is attached. And we only do that 239 more times. I bought this cool radial plate from DX Engineering. They make no good stuff generally, and they have this stuff called SS30, and it's suspended copper, and you use it for uh, anti-galling, and it'll go on all the screws. For the radial plate there's 60 screws and we'll have 60 radials attached for every antenna Another one. From us. That's right. Zoom in on what you're working on. Yep. Here's Paul putting the last radial on for this antenna. This is, uh, pull a little tight, would you? This is the uh, last radial that uh, we did on this antenna, and this is radial number 60. And I just got to show you something. This is our uh, end of that radial. And this is our uh, six foot nine and a half. I want you to look at this. 
This was the first radial that we put in. We're within three inches all the way around this 65 foot circle and uh, you can see for yourself that everything matched up and this is attributed to George W4BUW in his mathematics skills. Thank you George. It's my A number one helper. Say something Paul. That's a lot of work but <laughs> it's really going to be worth it. <laughs> we hope so right? Yeah. Alright so this is what it looks when you lay 60 radials on a 60 radial plate. There's uh, 60 holes and as you can see, they're just looped in and around, which is fine because uh, what we're going to do now is, uh, or I'm going to do, is I'll dress them up, put terminals on everything, and uh, finish this one off. This is the uh, southeast antenna, and uh, we only have three more to go. How about that? This is the radial tie wires and how we did it. Wrapped it around. We're going to come back and resist and solder it. Each one has a uh, six inch galvanized nail just to hold it in place. As you can see, they're all tied up all the way around in the uh, cross ties so that the radial for each antenna does not cross over and uh, cause trouble. This way everything is solid and it's the same uh, ground plane. As you can see, the radials are down and they glisten so nicely in the sun. All 60 of them, how about that? And that's how it's done. This is what the first 20 of the uh, radials look like terminated using the uh, SS20 copper stuff. You stick the bolt from underneath, stick it above, and dress your wires into the radial plate.
Okay, it's taken quite a bit of time, but I was able to uh, finish my first antenna. 60 connections, ring terminals on each, each soldered, and uh, it's all dressed up. And I'll put some pea gravel around it and uh, make it all pretty. But uh, that's antenna number one, so only three to go. Okay, antenna two, the northeast antenna is now complete. The uh, radial ring is 60 radials terminated on it. That makes two antennas down and two to go. Not bad, but it's a lot of work. Each position is terminated with a, a one inch stainless bolt a washer, an internal to stainless uh, lock washer between the um, terminal and the radial plate so it makes good contact and everything has JetLube 30 on which is kind of a copper looking uh, deal and that's supposed to protect and make good conductivity. Okay this is antenna 3, this is the northwest antenna. It is now terminated all 60 and we're on to our last antenna which will be another 60 it's all done okay antenna number four radials terminated and uh, we are ready to roll put the antennas up now this one was particularly hard uh, only because you had to reach all the way over across by the fence but it's all done now it's looking good Today's the day we assemble the four antennas. Richard's coming over, WD4CBA. And as we build them, we'll put them up here on the uh, sawhorses. Here, Richard and I are putting together the bottom section. The master tool maker at work, putting the bolts in the bottom section so we don't misplace them. We're at the hose clamp section, trying to figure out uh, where what goes where got the bottom stuff bolted together and now we've got a hose clamp all this junk together <laughs> Say there's at least what two or three inches yeah. inside the machine. Yeah, I'll hit see. that nail. Yeah, I think uh, if you can go a little more, let me move the nail. Okay. Yeah, if you can do that, just that's just, just, that's, oh, just good stuck God. there. Okay. Yeah, I just for uh, radial. Okay, just a Perfecto. How about that? Okay, we're ready to roll. Here's how it goes in the ground.
Just like that. Okay, these were assembled yesterday. There's four identical DX Engineering antennas. They're in two pieces so we can transport them. They're 70 feet, 7 inches long. And the ends are uh, right around a uh, quarter inch. And uh, they're a little gangly, but uh, we'll haul them down and uh, hook them up. You are ready to go, nice and easy. This is antenna two. Whoa, what the heck? You must have hung up on that somehow. And there you go, 70 feet, 7 inches of wonderful antenna up. All right, so here we are, Richard the master cranker upper. This is antenna two, it's up. As you see, antenna one is up. The winch makes it very easy to uh, crank it up. It's a boat looking winch, you hook it on the antenna. Now our next step will be to reinstall the bolts that secure it. Down below, of course, is the pivot and all that. So there you go. Another antenna in the air. Okay, this is what it looks like when we lay the, radi or the uh, radiators down. They uh, crisscross near the center. I've uh, lowered the, uh, each one of the antennas down in preparation for tuning. And uh, that leaves one up, and we'll do some tests on that now. Make sure it's on frequency and where it needs to be. We suck it through 100 170 feet of one inch conduit with our trash bag as the shuttle and here's our pole rope all ready to go so now I'll hook the uh, uh, cable on the other side when my assistant gets here we will uh, pull the cable from the other side here to the center of the four square using this and I'll also tie an additional one so that I can use it for a pull rope later on should I need to pull any kind of line or extra wire or something through the conduit. So this is the uh, pull rope that I use. It's made by uh, Klein Tools. Comes in a uh, five gallon bucket with a hole in the top that plays the uh, pull rope out. Good for 210 uh, pounds of pull and that's what I use. now. So to start the pull process, I uh, do uh, three half hitches. A half hitch is a compression knot 
that when pulled from the right side here, um, it only gets tighter. And I will uh, tie the uh, tail that I'm holding down with my thumb uh, down with a piece of tape. Typically when I pull stuff, I pull it uh, very near the end as you see. And I uh, also uh, put the smaller wires, which I'm going to add that Cat 5 there, uh, to it in the next step. And then tape it up real nice and smooth. And then, of course, uh, don't forget this stuff. This is your uh, number 77 pulling lubricant. Uh, it's mostly beeswax, but it's uh, really great. And it'll allow me to uh, make this stuff as slick as heck to go down that tiny little hole down there. In this next step, when I add the Cat 5, which will be my control wire for the 80 meter Foursquare, I've cut it on a bias, and as you can see, some of the wires have kind of protruded. But I'm going to put it onto the big coax here and uh, turn it and tape it down as flat as I can get it right along this uh, RG, uh, or RG8 size. It's LMR 400. And uh, I'll tape the whole thing up so it's nice and uh, slick going through the uh, cable. And last but not least, I'll tie another piece of this uh, pulling rope onto it so I can pull a new uh, pull rope through at the same time. Okay, I've started the tape job. As you can see, it's uh, uh, right up close uh, to the edge, kind of making a cone. Where the pull rope comes through it if i can get it in focus where the pull rope comes through it and uh, when you tape something don't use the bargain basement uh, crappy tape you get for 25 cents a roll do use some decent tape because if this fails someplace along the tube you have to redo it all again so now i'm going to add the additional pull rope and i'll put that right up close here and then tape the whole works down and be able to make a nice smooth package. Okay, tape job is done now. As you can see, I've wrapped up the pole. I've got the uh, Cat5 control and the uh, RG8 uh, LMR400. It's all ready to go. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, pulling uh, yellow 77 on it and uh, pull it through. Now, one thing. While you can break the tape and uh, wrap it up, my suggestion is do not do that. Uh, bend it and put a little tail at the end so you can easily unwrap it. Typically it gets gooped up and everything and it's very hard to find and then you'll want to cut it. And uh, while that's okay, you end up wasting cable and it's not necessary. So just put a small tail at the end. If you use good tape, it won't cost uh, anything and uh, it won't come apart. Okay, so I've uh, folded over the end of the tape now, and uh, I'm just going to push it down tight and wrap it around. And as you can see or not, it leaves just a little tail at the end. And since the uh, tape is wound helically, it's not going to come off on you. So we're ready to pull after a nice lube job using the yellow 77. Well, again, which is this ideal product. All available at your favorite antenna store, uh, Mines Home Depot. I get all my stuff there, or a lot of it, uh, for things like wire and conduit. Works well. Okay, now, this is a box where I'm going to bring the uh, cable, but as you can see, there's spider webs and all kinds of goodies all in and around everywhere. So I'm going to uh, use a technique that I use. I use my uh, propane torch here, instant on. Now the object is not to go melt and burn everything. It's a quick blast, which will root out all of the uh, venomous spiders like black widows, brown recluses, plus it will vaporize all the webs. As you can see, spider down here has made quite a, a web here. And uh, I've tried all kinds of things. And really when you work on these things, the best things, at least for me, is just torch it real quick. So you can see the effect. It instantly melts the web. As you see, sometimes it catches on fire. But moreover, what it does for me is the little guys that hide up in here. Um, well, go somewhere else. 
got flying around my head. <laughs> Who knows what? Okay. So I'm going to come in here, blast all the webs and junk out of the way. See, without really burning anything, hot blast of, uh, of uh, torch will usually clear up just about all the junk in here. And if there are any kind of uh, uh, spiders, they'll have gone somewhere else by now. Uh, a little blast here and there. And that uh, pretty well gets rid of it. Now this is the middle of winter, so most of them are probably dead. But in any case, it's uh, it's good measure to uh, do it. And you can see it didn't even hurt the little ladybug that's hanging out in here. So there you are. Well, there you have it. About 180 feet of pull. We were able to pull it through and uh, came through well. As you can see, when we talked about earlier, the uh, pulling snot, aka number 77, pulled just fine. Even the little end that we left on the back here is ready to be removed and uh, untape the whole banana. So it works out pretty well. My assistant, be my wife, she's uh, on the other end feeding it. So it worked out well today. All right, so here's the side that we pulled from. It's not a lot left of the uh, 200 foot. So I'm guessing it's, yeah, about 170 feet maybe in the tube. And uh, here's the hole, and uh, you can see I've got the new uh, pull rope in it, ready to pull. Okay, after installing my 80 meter Foursquare by DX Engineering, it's time to try it out. This will be the first turning on of the controller, and here we go. goes through an exercise and uh, that's the LEDs this will be channel 1 channel 2 or excuse me uh, northeast southeast southwest and northwest and this is the omni button where we have omnidirectional uh, direction of the antenna so it looks like it's working now I just got to use it. All ready to roll here. And as you can see, there it is. The antennas in the wind. They all bend uh, with the wind uh, pretty easy and uh, hopefully they're not going to go anywhere. So this is the K4 Sugar Victor 80 meter transmit Foursquare in action.